Thank you for joining me. I know you've got a busy schedule. Uh, the staff and myself would just like to bring you up to date on what we're proposing to do with our ministry vacancy. Now, as you may know, Pastor Chris Johnson and his family moved to Phoenix, Arizona and are going to be serving as one of the pastors there at the ministry known as Crosswalk Lutheran Church. We're looking forward to uh, hearing what God does among them. But that means we have a vacancy here, and whenever a church has a vacancy, it's a time to step back and reevaluate. Let's see what we need to do better, maybe what we need to stop doing, maybe what we need to expand, or somewhere in between all of that. And after several weeks of study, we as a staff have really decided that the best course of action would be to, to address several ministry areas, five or six of them. Let me just run through those for you. First of all, we really believe that we need to expand our online ministry opportunities, which impacts both our partners as well as our community. As you're aware in your own life, both among friends and maybe in the workplace, technology is advancing swiftly and we want to leverage that better for the kingdom's sake. And that's why we've gone with St. Mark Live now on uh, Sunday mornings at our De Pere campus at 9 a.m. enables us to stream live services. We're also expanding our Jesus Cares ministry with Worship at the Cross, which is now going to be online and streaming live across the nation and even available in several military bases. So we're really looking forward to that. But we, need, we really need to, to put some more effort, maybe even some more people part-time in that area. We also believe we need greater consistency and excellence in our children's ministry. We have a great preschool, we have four of them, a great child care, we have a wonderful uh, Lutheran elementary school, but we also offer something on Sunday morning called Children's Church at our Green Bay campus and De Pere campus, and we need more of you to volunteer for that. We also need to take that a step up, so that might mean um, calling some people part-time for a little more consistency or offering people that are now volunteering in that area some extra training at, at our expense, you know, free to them. We also want to continue to expand and improve our cross training on Wednesday nights. It's a great program, and uh, again, we need more volunteers for that, but also we, we might need some people a little more, I would say, consistent in that area, because that's an important ministry as we give parents more tools so that they can train their own children in Jesus. We also need to better leverage what we call social media today, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or, or YouTube or whatever you choose to use. Uh, we don't think we're doing a very good job of that. It's the way a lot of people learn. It's, a lot of way, it's the way a lot of people communicate. And we really need to spend some more time. For example, how many of know, you know that we have an app for both Android as well as Apple phones, and maybe you don't have it, and we haven't talked about it enough, and that's my fault, and so we want to make sure we, we do that a little better. We also want to expand our digital footprint, which means we need to mo make more use of what God is doing in your life through testimonials, or through even filming some of the things that go on in one of our ministries, and, and getting that out to the community as well as the community of faith we call St. Mark. We need to probably better package some of the Bible classes, some of the courses, some of the series we preach, so that you can utilize those maybe for your own family devotions, personal devotions and growth, or to share with a friend who has questions about the Christian faith. We also, as a staff, believe we need to plug more people in to find out what their gifts are and then give them a chance to enjoy those gifts, to go ahead and work out the purpose God has given in their lives, to help them really stretch their wings, so to speak, in serving the Lord in various capacities. And I think, frankly, we have done a poor job of doing that and, and need to do that better because a lot of you are sitting on the sidelines wanting to help, just waiting to be asked and or trained in a certain capacity. And then overall, we just need to better assimilate. Not only our new partners, but our veterans. We want to make sure no one falls through the, the cracks. We want to make sure people have opportunities for small group Bible classes, which we call Oasis groups, or the large groups we have. We want someone, when they're new, to be kind of followed up on for, the, for a whole year, making sure they don't fall through the cracks. We want to make sure we don't lose people through the back door. Certainly, we want to give them opportunities if they want to go to a different church that we understand. But, you know, we'd want to make sure we can follow up the best way we can to care for everyone that Jesus has put into our care. Now, as I said before, we as a staff believe there's no one pastor, staff minister, or teacher 
that has all those gifts and can do all those things. And that's why we believe it's going to be five or six or maybe even seven different people from our congregation called part-time or hired part-time, depending on their position. And maybe even a, a couple times we have to outsource some things, especially in technology, to better do the things we think we need to do to better help the kingdom footprint here at St. Mark. Another reason we believe we shouldn't call a pastor is because right now we're part of a bigger family of faith called the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Senate, the Wells. Right now there's a, a vacancy of pastors. There's a shortage between 110 and 120 pastors. I don't know about you, but, but we as a staff and I personally just don't feel right calling a pastor to St. Mark when there are other churches that are just wanting just one preacher. Here we've got myself and Pastor Workentine. We've got staff ministers that also can preach in a pinch for us if Ben or myself gets sick. And we just think for the kingdom overall, it would be wiser for us to keep two pastors and call some part-time people from our congregation who already agree with our philosophy of ministry and they buy into ministry and are on fire for Jesus. Now, I'm going to let you know there's some things that are going to happen in the event that this goes ahead and, and happens. And one of the things I'm going to tell you, and you'll see it uh, in the show notes, we're going to be having an open forum toward the end of, of November or beginning of December just to take some feedback on this and a few other issues as well. So watch the WHO, the worship handout for that, and also the website. Now, this, if we do this, this means immediately there's some things going to happen. Uh, right now, our Monday night, or excuse me, our Monday night service, yes, our Monday night service is going to go to a video venue. We continue to have Monday night service. We'll offer communion here on the third uh, weekend of the month at the De Pere campus. We'll have the Q&As the other times. But at some point, it's going to switch over to be the same format that our Green Bay campus 10 a.m. service is on a Sunday morning, where everything is live, music's live, everything, but then you simply watch the message on video, on the big screens, and then have a live Q&A and prayer time. That'll happen likely in December, at the latest, January 1st, 2020. The Riverside campus, we've decided at this point to close. It's as if God's saying, you know what? It was good. It's time to close it right now and probably restart it down the road. And then you can take those personnel and that energy and, and kind of pour it into the online, on-campus church that Jesus seems to be blessing tremendously, just tremendously. We have a lot of times over 100 people watching online and then about 300 to 400 during the week again. And that's in, in addition to the 1,200 to 1,400 that show up personally every weekend at all of our campuses and all of our services. So keep that in mind. Some of the positions I talked about really can go ahead and be hired or called within the next month or two. All the rest, certainly after January 1st of 2020. One thing you need to understand, this really doesn't change our ministry budget at all. In fact, um, we wouldn't have to utilize all of the money that we had dedicated for Pastor Chris and his ministry. And yet we'd be able to shore up some holes and expand some ministries and increase ministry excellence overall. So, hey, if you've got some questions, don't hesitate to contact me through the church office or through my email address, which you'll see in the show notes. God's blessings. I look forward to seeing you this weekend.